Hi, this is Bruce McConnell of Locomotive Systems Training. I want to thank Bob Daly for coming in and uh, teaching this class in my absence. He did a great job for a first time, and we'll look forward to him doing a lot of these videos. Okay, today we're going to talk about the EMD crankcase. Okay, all right. This is a top view of an EMD crankcase. Like Bob mentioned in his last video, this is not a block. How many times people refer to it is amazing. A block is a one-piece casting. GE locomotive engines have a block. EMD is a whole bunch of components that are put into a fixture and are welded together by, by welding machines. This is called the crankcase. It is not a block. Make sure you clearly understand it. It's a crankcase, not a block. <clears throat> okay, with that being said, let's talk about the top view. First of all, is there a front and a rear? And is there a left and right? Like Bob said in the last class, absolutely there is. And the key note to look for that is this little guy opening right here. That's a rather large opening. That is called the front Y-pipe. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, we got to talk about this section right here. This whole section right here it, underneath this deck is what they call a water return manifold. All the water from each power assembly, all the water from the after coolers comes into here, and all that water flows from the back of the crankcase and it flows forward and it expels or it exits out the front Y pipe going up to the radiators. So, <clears throat> not only is this the mounting bracket for the exhaust manifolds, it's also water return. And you'll notice here that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight openings here. And on the other bank, there's the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight openings there as well. And what those openings are, ladies and gentlemen, is that is the, that where the cooling water from each power assembly dumps back in to the water return manifold. The water in this whole section here is the hottest water in that engine. Okay? So the water return manifold. The exhaust manifold through these all these oval openings here is where the exhaust comes from the power assembly and exits and does an actual turn upward and, it, and the exhaust manifolds are mounted here and they take that exhaust and they run it down to the back of the engine. So the water flows this way but the exhaust goes backwards. Especially on a turbocharged engine. Now, <clears throat> so we have the power assemblies, each power assembly is dumping heated water in the water return manifold. We also have water from the after coolers, there's one on each side, that's taking water and dumping it into here, okay? So we got a lot of water. So we need to be careful, if we ever have like a strip bolt hole in here, you want to be careful, you can't drill down too deep, because if you drill down too deep, you're going to have a water leak, okay? All right, also in the crankcase here, we have these great big openings here, and you'll notice that there's eight per bank. Now, to, to, to remind you of what Bob taught you in the last video, this being the front of the engine, that would be number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Power assembly is numbered that way. Remember what Bob said, you go back to the front again, this would be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is a V16 engine. Or, ah, I almost said block, didn't I? This is a crankcase. Now, so we have the opening. This is where the power assemblies actually fit in into this crankcase. Now, also you'll notice that we have these great big studs between each, and they call these openings uh, head pots. So we have 16 openings for 16 power assemblies. So this is a very busy place. Now, to hold those power assemblies in place, we have what they call crab bolts or crab studs. You got two here, two here, and you literally have two per cylinder, okay, all the way down the line on both banks. Now, what happens is when they put the power assembly in, they have what they call crab plates, which we're going to talk about in another video in the future, okay? So these crab bolts, along with crab plates or crabs, as they call them, will actually hold the power assembly into the crankcase, okay? And depending on the type of, of engine that this is being built, built, we'll determine the torque. But I want to point out something really, really important here. Right here, this area right here, right here, and I'm going to step over in front of the picture, right here and right here are surface areas that are used on the end power assemblies 
as a contact surface for the, either the crab itself or the plate crab. Okay. Also, I want to point out right here in the smack dab in the middle of this picture, you've got two great big surfaces, both on the left bank and also on the right bank. Okay. Those also are contact surfaces for the crabs for this power assembly, the crabs for this power assembly, and then one crabs for this one, and the crab surface for this one here. Okay. So, you, so that way you have end crabs for every quarter of the engine. Here, here, and let me get in the picture, over here and over here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we talked about the water return manifold, we talked about the exhaust manifolds, now we've talked about where the power assemblies are assembled, and they go into each one in their respective holes. And by the way, one thing I also want to mention is these little bitty openings right here also align the power assembly correctly into this crankcase. That way you can't put it in wrong, okay? But it's really, really important to understand that. Also, we talked about, depending on the type of engine, if it's a 645 engine, the torque on these crab plate nuts is going to be 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. And we'll talk about that later, how we, the steps we take to make sure that we properly torque that will be done in a future video. If this is a 710 engine crankcase, then it'll use crab plates that are very, very large, and you'll see those in a future video. Crab plates will fit in here, and the torque on those will be 2,400 foot-pounds of torque. So, uh, ah, another thing, these little bitty mounting plates right here, they all align, and what those do, that becomes the lay shaft. If it's an MUI locomotive, mechanical unit injection, it's going to have a governor, like Bob said, you'll have a rack, a, a line, a round shaft that goes all the way down here in bearings, and it'll extend out through the engine, and you have the same thing up here, and that will go through all the power assembly, extend out here, and it'll connect to a lever system, which is attached to the governor. And what that does, when you have this rack and it's on both sides, that'll determine injector control on both banks at the same time. So that's what those mounting surfaces are for. And let me take a look here. I think we've covered just about everything except one thing. You'll notice back here we have four bolts, bolt holes here, and we have four bolt holes here. Even though that's also the front Y-pipe connection for the Y-pipe, this is also where the mounting bracket goes and the mounting bracket goes there to actually lift this power, lift this crankcase out of the EMD engine. So that's what that's for. And I think we've got it covered as far as the top view. Let's take a look now at the side view. Here it is. Okay. Looks like it's on a machine table here. And again, up here we have the head pots. Okay. And this one happens to be a V8. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Well, it's a little dark back here, but that's, you have to trust me. Over here, what's really cool about this shot is right here we have the molded casting from another factory. They have not even machined the opening. This is where the compression relief valve, or what's known in the railroad industry, as a flashcock. Okay? It'll, it'll be machined out, it'll be threaded, and it'll have a place for a seal and a stem and a housing, which, again, we'll talk about in a future video. But that's where those would go. And the compression relief valve, once they're all open, it allows the engine to rotate easier because you're not going against the compression of each cylinder. So that's what these do. And also, what these openings do, when you open up that test valve, it's also been known as a test valve, you'll open these up, and as you do an engine evaluation, if you have any liquid accumulation such as fuel or water, or fuel and water, it will then come out of these openings here once you open up the flashcock or the, the compression relief valve. So that's another good troubleshooting tip. So we go further down, okay, this whole area right here, and you can see the weld right here, this whole area is the top deck area of this. From here, from here to here, from here to here, that's all top deck, okay? And also, like Bob mentioned in the last video, we also say that there is a uh, uh, lube ball separator system that actually comes in and draws all the vapors out. And he's absolutely right. Well, this section of the engine is part of that area that is under a vacuum when the engine is running. Now, right below the deck plate here where this weld is, then this area from here, clear down to here, all the way back, is what we call the air box. This is where the air enters right here, these two openings right here. The air enters from either a blower, which is also known as a supercharger, 
or a turbocharger. That air comes in here very, very fast. Fast. There's a huge volume of air coming through there. Air, at idle, it's very, very minimal, but when that either the turbocharger or the blower get ramps up the speed, packs a lot of air in this air box. And as you can see, there's a huge amount of surface area, and this is on one bank. And by the way, this opening here banks over clear over to the other bank as well. So these are actually connected inside here. So this whole area right here swirls with air when this engine's running. Now, we don't show it here, but right below here is where we have the oil pan connects to the crankcase, okay? Another thing I wanna mention, and I just now saw it, two more little areas of, of interest. Back in here, you see all these molded uh, mounts, if you will. Those, once they get machined down, those become where the, uh, the, the, the location of where the camshaft, lower and upper, bearing block goes. So the lower goes there. They, they all fit on here. They're all line board, which means they're in a dead straight line. And then you put the lower cam bearing here. Then you put the cam bearing. Then put the camshaft in there. And then you put the block on top of that. So this is the location of where the camshafts go. It's an overhead cam engine. Now, located right here, like I said before, on this shot here, this is where uh, it's machined for the, for the linkage for each power assembly for the fuel system. And let me see if that just about covers it. Oh, one more really, really cool thing. This opening right here, when they form the air boxes, that like Bob mentioned in the last video, at a 45 degree angle, well that portion, that little bitty centered portion up there, actually becomes the main lube oil galley. Okay? And we'll talk about that when we get into the lube oil system. Also, down below here, we got a hole right here, and we have a hole right here, and that is where the cooling water for the water manifold goes, which goes the full length of the engine, and it, it comes down, and we have water delivered from the cooling from the water pumps, and water is delivered to each power assembly from that great big pipe. And it's about a four-inch pipe, pretty good size. And we have one on each bank, one on the right, one on the left. We better make sure we get that right, otherwise Bob's gonna let me know. All right. Also, down below here, we have what they call the A-frame. And then we have a, what they call a main bearing cap. And so every, this one is, let's see, let's count them. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it's 11. But don't quote me, I have to look up the E&D manual. But there is a main bearing uh, for between each power assembly where the, where the rods are connected to the crankshaft and they actually rotate in this area. So as you can see, they're rather stout design and that is where the crankshaft is mounted. So the camshafts are mounted way up here. Crankshaft is mounted down below here. And at the back of the engine here, whoop, not the back, this is the front. We put the, no, this is the back, my bad. We put the air ducts, the turbo, or the blowers or the supercharger on back here, okay? So as you can see, the crankcase is a very busy place. It has to support a lot of different components. They all have to be very exact. And the beautiful part about this is everything is standardized in this engine. Main bearings, rod bearings, everything is all standardized for this engine, which makes replacement of it very, very simple. Okay, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the EMD crankcase top view and side view and a little bit of the bottom view right here. And um, stay tuned for next week as we start to build into this crankcase. And don't forget to go to our website, which is, it's coming to you, wait for it, wait for it, here it comes. It's lst-ca.com. Once again, it's lst-ca.com. Thank you, and thank you again, Bob, for, for filling in last week for me. Have a safe day.